So here we're in uh, another garden with a different goal. And so this goal is to become, the other one was annual covers. This is gonna be perennial covers. Um, I have another one where the perennial covers is mostly uh, strawberries and um, clover. Uh, this garden is not very developed yet in this method. It's a transition year or trying to be a transition year into last year I started it also. You can see this pretty yellow uh, plant. This is Creeping Jenny. Bought that at the nursery and it has spread the best out of any of the things that I tried. Now I did research a little bit this year and it said Creeping Jenny is invasive and don't plant it. Uh, so yeah. Who knows? But the idea is you have to try different things to see if they will uh, have potential as a perennial cover. So last year I went to a local nursery and I bought, I don't know, probably eight, nine different types of low growing um, perennial plants. What I'm looking for in a cover is something that's not going to get very tall. I love the height of this. It's only probably three inches, maybe four inches at highest, meaning it's not gonna compete with the vertical space. You can see these snap peas have already grown way up and are falling back on it. And so this is really suppressing any weeds. Now, it might be difficult um, um, to uh, keep out of the rows of, of the crop itself. So that, that's the next test. Uh, I'm gonna take you around and I'll just show you the little plants that I have uh, in the ground now as perennial covers. I probably don't even know the names of a lot of them because the tags fell out. But it's not at this point, it's not so much about saying this plant works great. It's more saying, hey, get out there and try some uh, perennial covers. Here's just a shot of the garden from this angle. You can see the carrots coming up real nice there. Got volunteer spinach back there. And uh, this is the most empty of the, the gardens. There's not as much green as I would like there to be. That's largely because we're trying these somewhat slower growing perennials uh, covers. Now, if I sowed annual covers in here and had a good take, it would be green within a few weeks over the whole thing. So, but then you would have to let it reseed itself. This one is a little different than the other ones in that it likes partial shade. We got it over here along the edge of the garden. This is Sweet Woodruff. There's two more perennial covers uh, from last year. You see they've both spread pretty well, kind of condensed clumps. Creeping Speedwell, Georgia Blue. Uh, I feel like that's gonna handle the foot traffic pretty nicely. It's maybe a little taller than I'd like. I planted uh, two clumps of this grass last year. This is one. The other clump, I believe, died. Uh, didn't overwinter very well. I think it's called Mundo grass or something. It's supposed to be, some people plant their whole yards in it. it uh, as you can see, I don't think it's going to make the cut. Here's another perennial. We just planted this one this year. This is Penny Royal Tea. You can see the name on there. But that this year put it in um i love the smell of it i, th I think it's got a, a good you know all the characteristics of a good cover uh except that it may be overly aggressive the cover is called moss flocks um it was here last year you can see it's sort of lush but at the same time i feel like i can tap it down I think it's going to handle foot traffic really well. I think, again, in the long run, something like this might be very ideal, not overly aggressive, handle foot traffic, but take a long time to get established as opposed to creeping Jenny here. Actually, yeah, this is the moss box also. For some reason, it's flowering like crazy. The other one's not. Yeah, so it's always nice if you're covered to have flowers. These three clumps are clumps I started last year. Um, I think all three of them are some type of creeping thyme. They have a really nice smell to them. If you look at that, they, they seem to 
bounce back okay. This is a Veronica. It's, uh, you can see the height of it, probably five to six inches. I don't think it's getting much taller. Has what I really like the look of. Um, a little taller than the Veronica. I don't think this one would handle foot traffic very well. This is some type of red, I mean, actually, hey, we wouldn't call it a red clover, but you can see that the leaves are red. Uh, so this wouldn't be anything new other than the color of the, the clover. Here's an example of carrots. You see them here. Um, there was a row, I hoed a row. Uh, I ripped through this clover, hoed the row in. And then you can see the carrots out there where there's no clover coming down in here by the clover. That's quite nice in some areas with the clover. Generally weaker here by the clover, a little stronger out there away from it. Um, I don't know if it needs managed a little closer or ripped back a little further from the carrots, but um, still looking pretty good. By having, uh, not heavily mulching things, you get some happy things happening. You can see all these little asparagus ferns coming up uh, where I'd piled the old tops uh, last, last fall. And um, so with the voles being very prone to eat these and uh, go right down the row, so I'm starting to think, Anywhere I can get a clump of asparagus to grow on its own, I'll let it. I'm going to show you uh, some of the advantages of the living cover. Uh, here you can see some quite large untrimmed clover. And right beside this, you can see you can see the carrot row with the freshly thrown um, living cover in there to try to have dead mulch around it, but using the living stuff uh, in the pathways. Green beans uh, in this mulch area transitioning to a cover, um, or hoping to transition into a cover. And then here you can see, if you look closely, you can see the green beans. And I just took these elderberry, uh, the green parts only, not, not the, so let's see, it's green this year's growth. And I put it, here by the green beans to be the start of a mulch. Now this isn't enough, but the elderberry will keep producing shoots. It's down there at the end of the row. Trimming back the shoots that I don't, that they're getting in the way, creating shade. Or, or so here's one side, so use this side. So you just use this and cut off what you don't want. This one's in a fine spot, but we'll cut it off anyhow. And a lot of these, they can just be ripped off because they're they're so tender. You can just pop them off like that. But the, the woody part, I just leave at the base. Uh, and then the green part, we use this as your sort of heavier mulch, but I think that'll break down in a season. The panorama, just sort of a little quick overview of what the uh, cover crop, the garden with cover crops being largely um, perennial. Now, caveat here is that the, the cover crop is certainly not fully established. Here we see one of the more established pathways. Here's some mint, pennyroyal, that's in the pathway. Uh, this is chick pea, lima beans, midsummer, mid, mid, this is mid uh, July. When I got a little concerned about the progress on this garden about a week and a half ago, that's when I saw the lima beans, uh, not the lima beans, the green beans. And uh, the green beans are usually a powerhouse force in the mulch system. And um, some years they just produce and produce and produce, and we can and we can and we can. But um, this year's not started out that way. We uh, we get the lima bean or the green bean rows behind me here. Uh, I'll show you them more closely here in a bit. But um, a lot of them just look rather stunted and sick. There's a uh, one one variety or one little section that looks pretty good. But um, again, I think the reflection is the same as 
with the last garden um, putting essentially no mulch in this garden this year. Um, I think I underestimated the how much the garden relies on that massive influx of nutrients that you're importing. Um, and so again, like over there, I started putting the leaf mulch around this close to the plants to try to see if we could kick them in gear here a little bit. But we'll show you what the, the green beans look like. We have small amounts of lots of little green beans, but if you look at this plant, the leaves just look yellow and on happy. There's one variety here that is notably better. But again, these are all varieties I've used and, I, and had great success with, with a lot of them. And uh, this would be the happiest of, of the, you know, and you can pretty much if it's a big plant, typically we've had lots of green beans, like more like that kind of thing. This is our red okra. see the size difference from there to there. To me this looks decent but I don't really know what well, I know okra can get quite tall so I'm not sure if that's good either. The popcorn is better than it did last year in the other garden. Every year at the uh, end of the season I like to reflect on what worked well what, what didn't work so well and uh, in the in this garden with the perennial covers uh, it's still way too early to have any idea of which which perennials are, are long-term keepers um, there's a few that got sort of I'd say set back pretty hard by the shade of the garden crops but uh, so stay tuned for on that but um, the the biggest takeaway I would say for both this garden and the annual covers is that um, I feel like I don't want to have covers over the whole garden um, because it seems too competitive with the crop. So very quickly transitioning into more of a living pathway system with, with mulched, um, mulched rows. Probably next year keep the rows about a foot and a half mulched and, and everything else, some type of living cover. Um, and I, I think that imported fertility um, really does a lot for the growth of the plant. As much as I'm tired of hauling leaves and grass and manure, it seems like the crops really respond to it. <clears throat> Part of that may be that it's, you know, it feels like it takes uh, a lot of the spring and even June for things to kick in gear and start to really um, produce and um, get the heat that you need but nevertheless um, that's the key takeaway so other crops that um, yay or nays in terms of keepers so I'm, I'm here by um, this year's big winner in my mind uh, okra now this is this is armpit height here as we uh, are in Pennsylvania uh, south southern Pennsylvania and this is um, mid what is this beginning of September <laughs> can't remember uh, so beginning of September the okra really produced well now I did um, continue to make sure it was really well watered uh, got a lot of urine applications on it started spreading the duck manure under it um, because when you see something's productive and everything else a lot of other things are tapering off you keep Keep focusing on what's working so uh, we had plenty for fresh eating put some in the freezer we have one row of it next year two rows right so we're gonna increase how much of that we get uh, hopefully <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> big loser um, chickpeas tried that for a second time this year this is the first time we got a crop um, you know it grows okay but it's very frustrating to grow these little pods and uh, they mature at different times. You pick them out and <clears throat> it just doesn't feel like much for all the work that you, you get for it. So chickpeas out, increase um, okra. Uh, carrots, real good germination this year. Very pleased with the germination. 
But then um, when it came time to harvest, uh, four of the six varieties were terribly buggy, eating up just, just terrible health on the carrots underground. Um, and then there was two other varieties that seemed decent. And those two were side by side at the same end of the garden. I think I saw on my notes that I uh, fractured the soil with a fork in those areas and, and just planted the other ones direct. Uh, so next year, I need to do that again. I need to fracture the soil for half the carrots, don't fracture for the other half, and see if there's a corresponding health related to fracturing the soil. I'm seeing that in, in more sites, the need to not till, but just put cracks in the soil so that, that the roots of the carrots can get down there and um, grow, grow through somewhat loosened soil. So uh, that needs to be explored a little bit more. But I think those are the big, big takeaways for next year headed into it. So I'll, I'll show you a quick scan of the garden, see what everything looks like here toward the end. Um, looks kind of sad because it's, it's wrapping up, but you'll have a sense. And this is what the garden looks like end of the season. This is wrapping it up. Oh, one last thought. If you look down this way, you see these purple flowers right in next to the lima beans. This is hands down the most uh, aggressive tea, uh, cover that I planted. This is Penny Royal. Definitely gets points for quick establishment smelling great bringing pollinators in as you can probably see um is it going to be a bear to work with and contain probably but this is signing out for the, this garden for 2023 wishing each of you a good fall and god bless